Well, for some more perspectives on this, joining me now is the Ukrainian ambassador to the UK, Volodymyr Kondohi. Uh, ambassador, f first of all, just on the diplomacy, I mean, it does seem that these talks have failed. At least uh, there's no diplomatic breakthrough ahead of what looks likely to be the vote on Sunday. Certainly. And what I heard today after the press conferences of both Mr. Kerry and Lavrov, uh, they have not come to any, any conclusion as far as the resolution of the situation in Ukraine. So you, you can safely assume that they failed, I think. In terms of the vote, uh, I know you dispute its constitutionality, its legality, uh, as does the British government. Uh, it says it's illegal and illegitimate. But it will go ahead, and therefore the facts will change in a way, won't they? Because you can see that the Russians will use this to say most people in uh, the Crimea want to join Russia. Well, first of all, I would like to once again reiterate that we do not recognize this uh, so-called referendum. A referendum, any vote in a, in, a, in a situation when you have foreign troops stationed there uh, would not produce any meaningful results. So whatever the result would be, but those results would be uh, sort of casted. The votes would be casted with the uh, foreign uh, occupation of Crimea. So we, I don't believe, and no one would really believe that that would be a genuine uh, expression of the will of the people that live in Crimea. But do you see it to pick up some of the thoughts from that discussion there. Do you see it as a step towards Russia ratifying the results, even though you dis dispute it, well, what, uh, and, and therefore annexation, yeah, yeah, effectively? Well, yeah, I, th I, I see this logic of events. Uh, at least uh, what have been done inside, in Moscow, for instance, the introduction of the special law, how to insert into Russian Federation new uh, so-called subjects of this uh, federation. That tells uh, us that uh, the, the, the sort of the objective certainly is not to, to hold the referendum and stop on that. And certainly we would, uh, we are thinking, uh, we think that Russia would go on with the annexation. What do you, when you see not just the troops in, in Crimea, but you see these um, purely coincidental, uh, heavy uh, exercises of Russian troops right on your borders elsewhere. Very, very significant exactly. exercises. How do, how do you think most Ukrainians feel about that? Most of, of Ukrainians feeling very bad about it. I mean, uh, that uh, had provoked in Ukraine uh, a huge amount of uh, public uh, resistance uh, to, on a, at least on the psychological uh, level, uh, that that shouldn't happen. and. Uh, we, we, we totally, I don't think even in Crimea people are very happy with the Russian heavy uh, sort of uh, vehicles and uh, uh, troops are, which is there. They're not happy with that either, at least not all of them. But in, in Ukraine in general, this is a very bad, uh, it caused bad feelings. I just, and just where do you see this? going for, from here, because I've talked to a lot of Ukrainians who say the thing that they worry about most is that there will be some pretext, there will be some uh, trouble where a Ukrainian may react uh, yes. to, to what you see as provocation, and that will provide a pretext for further trouble. Is that, I mean, is that well, what you worry about? You know, we worry about that too, but of course we have to realize that until now, uh, soldiers, uh, Ukrainian forces have demonstrated quite a, a remarkable uh, restraint in, uh, in, not pro in not being provoked, in not responding to the provocation which is now uh, ongoing in, in Crimea. I uh, know for sure that Ukraine will use all necessary means to defend its territory and this is uh, something that must be clear to everyone. Uh, Ambassador, thank you very much. Uh, just as you were speaking there, uh, just to bring you up to date uh, with uh, NATO's thinking, NATO uh, uh, is saying now that Crimea's referendum would be a violation of Ukraine constitution and international law. Uh, in fact, that's all, that's all we've got on that. But basically agreeing with, uh, with your point. So you've now got the backing of NATO, the United States and so on. But I'm tempted to say, so what? Because the facts on the ground are very different from the rhetoric. Unfortunately, we, ha we would have expected uh, more uh, sort of uh, fruitful uh, uh, results uh, from the discussions and from the pronouncements that are being uh, here all, all along. Um, we did get this uh, political support and we are very grateful to everyone 
and both in the Security Council, in NATO, on bilateral level, we are, we are hearing and we appreciate the position of the United Kingdom uh, for, uh, for that matter. But still we would like to see more resolute approach from the international community. Uh, we would like to see the um, um, utilizing or using all necessary measures to stop Russia from uh, from interfering into Ukraine's uh, uh, internal affairs, from occupying Ukraine, uh, from uh, from basically annex annexing a part of Ukraine. Ambassador, thank you very much.